Have you ever felt pain on the front of your drawing side shoulder while shooting? If you have, this could be bicep tendonitis. Now this is one of the most common injuries for archers. So in this video, I wanna do a spotlight on this injury. I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know and more about bicep tendonitis, what it is, what causes it, how to prevent it, as well as cover treatment and rehabilitation options, as well as why you might wanna question your doctor if diagnosed with bicep tendonitis. Let's get started. Now the first thing you're probably thinking is that the bicep is located on the front of the arm, right? So how can pain in the front of the shoulder all the way up here be related to a bicep injury? Well, the first thing to understand is that the shoulder is a complex structure. And the bicep, whilst the bicep muscle is on the front of the arm here, it actually connects the radius in your forearm all the way up to the top of the shoulder girdle at a place called the supraglenoid. So, Specifically, the long head of biceps muscle and the long head of biceps tendon travels through a narrow channel at the top of the shoulder called the bicipital groove. And when the arm is put in certain positions, that tendon can sometimes catch or rub or be compressed within that groove, leading to an impingement injury. And obviously the more severe that impingement is and the, with more repetition, this can lead to inflammation of that bicep tendon, which is bicep tendonitis. So due to the range of motion that we do through archery, this does make this injury very relevant, prevalent in archers. However, because of the anatomy of the bicipital groove, which can vary from person to person, different people can be more prone to this injury than others. That may mean that between two archers shooting the identical style, one archer may be prone to this injury and one may not. This is another good reason why we shouldn't just teach archers a cookie cutter coaching approach because we may need to adapt the shooting style to suit the individual and minimize their risk of shooting. Now, of course, you don't have to do this if you have a large pool of archers and you don't mind breaking some eggs. Personally, however, I like to keep my eggs and my archers unbroken. So if you do too, keep watching this video and don't forget to subscribe. Now, there are a number of movements which increase the risk of injury to that long head of biceps tendon. And that is internal rotation, adduction, and flexion. Hmm. This starts to look very familiar, doesn't it? And it's the, obviously, it's the exact range of motion that we do thousands of times through our shooting training. So it should be no surprise why the long head of biceps uh, impingement is a very, very common injury amongst archers. So with this in mind, there are a number of factors throughout our technique and our shot process that do contribute to increased risk of impingement of that long head of biceps tendon. And the first one, is starting with the shoulders square to the target rather than open to the target in that setup position. Now I've done other videos on this covering the setup, raise and pre-draw position and how this should be done correctly by opening the shoulders to, to the target before aligning the shoulders into pre-draw. So I'll link that video up here. But of course it's also covered in a lot of detail in the Rogue Archery Masterclass so students over there will know this very well. The second thing that increases the risk of aggravation of that bicep tendon is to draw the bow with a square draw rather than an open draw. Let me demonstrate. A square draw is when you pull the bow back where it's basically in line with the target throughout the entire drawing sequence. Whereas an open draw is where the bow is slightly open to the target when you raise and then it's only when you come into full draw position that the bow comes into line with the target. Now, as a sidebar here, I've avoided using the term linear draw and angular draw because those, that terminology is often used incorrectly and inconsistently. But if you do want me to do the definitive video on linear versus angular draw, comment below this video, linear versus angular, and I'll look at making that video if enough of you want, want me to do the definitive answer to that question. But nevertheless, what you can see is that, in particularly in this pre-draw position, if um, we draw in a square way where the bow is directly in line, it actually creates slightly more adduction on the drawing side shoulder and increasing that risk of injury. Whereas if you have the bow slightly open in the pre-draw position, it just takes the edge off that shoulder adduction and redu slightly reduces or alleviates that risk of impingement on the long head of biceps. 
The next factor that increases the risk of impingement on the bicep tendon is starting from the setup position with an over-retracted drawing side scapula. Now again, this means that to go into the setup position, you have to go more into adduction, increasing that risk of impingement. You can see a common theme with these technical concepts. As we know, going into more internal rotation, adduction and flexion increases that risk. So technical drawing styles, which put you more into those positions, increase that risk. Seems rather obvious, doesn't it? I have done another video as well on correct scapular positioning throughout the draw sequence. I'll link that one up here as well. That's definitely worth checking out and an important concept to understand. The next factor that increases the risk of injury is increasing shooting poundage or increasing shooting volume. Now we know this, it is often the case, because archers will usually start to complain about pain in the front of the drawing side shoulder during periods of increased shooting intensity. So keep an eye out for it here, archers and coaches, because the earlier you can catch this, as we're gonna cover later in this video, the earlier you catch it, the better, and the shorter recovery times and the less intervention is required to avoid this injury escalating. Now, other than accommodations within our sh shot process and our shooting technique, there's another contributory factor to uh, the impingement of the long head of biceps, and that is tightness in the subscapularis, or the subscap. Now, the subscap is part of the rotator cuff, and it originates on the underside of the scapula, but it actually connects to the top of the bicipital groove right above, you guessed it, the long head of biceps tendon. So when the subscap is tight, it, first of all, it plays an important role in stabilization of the scapula and the shoulder girdle, as well as internal rotation of the humerus. But when it is very tight, it, that means that it applies a lot of pressure on the shoulder girdle itself, as well as increases the risk of impingement for that long head of biceps tendon. So archers are chronic for having tight subscap because we, we use the subscap a lot for stabilization of the shoulder girdle, but we also use it just through a very short range of motion. And as you know, when it comes to mobility, if you don't use it, you lose it. So just by virtue of being high strain, high repetition through a short range of motion, that subscap will just tighten over time and it can apply a lot of tension to the shoulder girdle and increase risk of not only this injury, but several others. So the good news is I've got your back and I've already done several videos uh, covering uh, how this can be addressed. Now the best way to address this is through a well-designed strength and conditioning program which works on balanced muscular development through the full range of motion for the shoulder girdle. I've also done other videos on the correct technique to do for pull-ups to lengthen and strengthen the subscapularis. Um, and another good thing to do for archers is to do scap pulls, uh, where you simply do a free hang from a supinated position with palms up on a bar with full scapular extension and just uh, depress the scapula, hold, and then relax. And that, that lengthening and strengthening of the subscap does alleviate some of the risk of injury for impingement on that long head of biceps tendon. Now, I do have some bad news at this point in the video. And that is, with this injury, the worse it gets, the worse it gets. Now, what do I mean by that? What I mean is that this is an overuse injury. So, by nature of the impingement on the bicep tendon itself, the more that tendon is compressed and rubbed and becomes swollen and inflamed, the more it compresses and rubs and becomes swollen and inflamed. So, if you catch this early enough and you address it with some of the things we've discussed in this video, it's usually not a big deal. Usually you can go back to shooting pain-free as it should be and the, the inflammation will address itself, go down and you will be off to the races. Unfortunately, however, if you push through the pain and ignore it and just train harder and, and just put up with it, then you can end up making this injury a whole lot worse. That means that further down the line, uh, you could cause more permanent injury and it could take, it's certainly gonna take a lot longer to recover and you could ultimately put yourself out of action. And I do know archers of a pretty high level that have put themselves out of action just simply by pushing through the pain. So it's not something I would recommend with this injury. So let's talk about some of the treatment options available if you do have this injury. Now, the first thing that happens if you go to your doctor with a tendonitis diagnosis is that they're probably going to want to give you a cortisol injection or a glucocorticoid or a corticosteroids, basically the same thing. Now, 
forgive me here guys, but doctors love that shit because uh, cortisone is a very effective steroid hormone um, for reducing inflammation in a local area. So it is true that if you have a cortisone injection directly into the tendon, that what will happen is it's, it will reduce the pain and inflammation, it will increase your range of motion uh, pretty much immediately and allow you to function better. Unfortunately, however, it is pretty much a band-aid solution and I'll tell you why. The first thing is it's addressing the side effect of the injury rather than the cause of the injury. Okay, so it's really only a temporary fix and unless you get continual cortisone injections, then um, it's not really going to address the long-term implications of this injury. The second reason is that anytime you inject something into a connective tissue like a tendon, um, you're perforating the tendon. This actually weakens the tendon itself and over time it can build up scar tissue and cortisone actually inhibits collagen production. All of these factors mean that over time, the tendon is going to become less elastic, more brittle, and you're going to increase your risk of a much more serious injury like a tear or even a full rupture of the tendon, which could, again, put you pretty much out of action. So for these reasons, I am pretty much dead against cortisone injections, uh, you know, in almost all cases. Now, if you happen to own shares in the company who produces corticosteroids, or maybe you have a really attractive pharmaceuticals rep, you might feel differently. However, in very few cases would I endorse cortisone injections, particularly into a joint or a connective tissue. The exception for this is that if you are an elite athlete and you have a major event coming up, let's say it's the national team selection or the Olympics, then you may decide that it is appropriate to get a couple of injections just to get you through that major event before you can heal up properly, address the cause of the injury with the things we've discussed in this video, and perhaps you'll sign up for the Rogue Archery Masterclass to save yourself thousands on physical therapy. But in almost all cases, guys, I am anti-cortisone injections. Now, believe it or not, one of the most effective treatments for uh, tendonitis is rest, okay? Because of the nature of an overuse injury where you continue to aggravate it, it continues to get swollen and inflamed and sore, just simply by not aggravating the injury, your body will naturally address the inflammation and heal itself, okay? So, this is to the frustration of many athletes because athletes have this mindset of always wanting to go harder, push more, push through the pain, do more. And unfortunately guys, you can't rest harder, okay? It's gonna take how long it takes. And sometimes you need to hang up the bow for a little bit um, in order to avoid causing yourself more pain down the line. As I said before, the worse it gets, and if you just push through the pain with this, uh, it's going to make things at the road to recovery a lot longer and harder down the line. You don't want to do that. You want to catch it as early as possible and address it using some of the methods outlined in this video. So during your rest and recovery phase, there are a couple of things that you can do to keep things moving along and to aid your recovery by addressing inflammation. Now, we've already talked about cortisol injections and how I'm not a fan of these treatment options, but you can also get prescription anti-inflammatories. Um, now, fair warning, these are not great for your gut health, so they're not a good option to take long-term, but they could be okay to take just to get things going and get you through a period of high inflammation. Uh, remember to check with your WADA affiliation about therapeutic use exemptions, more on that later. Um, but my personal preference is to address inflammation with a combination of nutrition and natural supplements with good anti-inflammatory benefits. So that could look like uh, eliminating pro-inflammatory foods from your diet, such as processed carbohydrates, refined sugars, uh, omega-6 oils, and vegetable oils. And there are also a, lot, a number of supplements that you can take, which are very effective natural anti-inflammatories. So, that could be a liquid form of fish oil. Um, now it's important here that you get a fish oil from a Nordic source. I won't go into it too much, but essentially with uh, fish oil supplements, if they're exposed to oxygen, they become rancid. So um, you want to get a supplement that was bottled in Norway because they have the strictest uh, filtration and bottling practices and it ensures you're gonna get a quality supplement that's effective. Um, another effective anti-inflammatory is curcumin, which is essentially a turmeric root extract with really, uh, really good anti-inflammatory properties. You can also take uh, resveratrol, which is a grapeseed extract, and it's one of the reasons why countries who drink 
red wine actually have lower rates of heart disease. Um, and there's also supplements like magnesium glycinate and zinc picolinate, which have uh, just good general health benefits for addressing inflammation, uh, nerve, hormonal health, and muscular health. So um, there's a couple of recommendations that you could look into. Now, on this note, public safety message here. Um, it is important that anything you're taking, any supplements, make sure you check them with your WADA affiliation. It uh, is also important that if you're taking any prescription dr prescriptions such as uh, corticosteroids or prescription anti-inflammatories that you check with your doctor and your WADA affiliation if you need a therapeutic use exemption. So athletes, please be all over that. You do not want to get pinged for taking the wrong thing. Did you feel in any way that you were cheating? No. So you're probably thinking that you know more about long head of biceps impingement and bicep tendonitis than even your physiotherapist does, and you might well do. However, I still recommend that if you think you do have an injury such as the biceps impingement, that you should seek a formal diagnosis from a skilled physical therapist. They can help you administer some of the treatments that are appropriate for you and send them this video to get the ball rolling and to put it all into context, but I still recommend you get a formal diagnosis. Also. If you want to avoid these kind of mistakes that all archers make and eventually holds people back and prevents them from getting to their full potential, then go sign up for the Rogue Archery Masterclass.